Welcome back. We're here for the Between Stars and Suns, season two, episode four. So, <sighs> resolved Spider Silk Seamstress, and one of our hunters has left not only Hargrave House, but also left this reality and returned home to the Fae. So, um, Mechanically, it's like, I just want to uh, make sure we clarify the, the rewards claims. So I believe Ernest had claimed the flawless suit <laughs> for his collection. And I believe uh, Sir Atticus wanted the monocle, correct? That, that is correct. All right. So then what do we have left? We have a music box inscribed with Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy, but the tune it plays is unrecognizable and causing strange dreams for delirious visions. And then a Venetian mask with crescent moons and stars and appears, the world appears more colorful through its eyes. Although you may not want to wear it too long because it causes temporary blindness. <laughs> so um, out of these remaining, what do you think, Chaotic? I think I'm the, uh, about the Venetian mask because that seems interesting. I could use that uh, to see things okay. or maybe cause temporary blindness in like other people. <laughs> Let me give this to you as a gift. All right, great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to say that a few days have passed since the end of the Midsummer Masquerade, Finn's departure, and whatever else has happened. So I think, you know, Dame Georgie has returned to the house. Um, any ideas of what Dame Georgie has been doing instead of joining their companions at, uh, at the ball? Oh, that's a mm. sticky wicket. That, that that is a bit complicated. Mm. Uh, I, have to, I have to actually look up some notes from a while back. <laughs> <clears throat> like your plan versus what actually happened. Sure, and uh, I offered this, and I will say I offered this in in a in a the in a different campaign. But if you have any Dawn questions that you kind of want to answer, that's mm. perfectly fine. So, mm -hmm. all right. If you want a chance to think about it, then. Yeah, you know. I, I want a chance to think about it because I need to get these names down because otherwise I'm going to misremember them and don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's all fine. It's all good. All right, great. Hmm. Well, there seems to be a remaining reward that goes wanting for now. Um. But as always, Hargrave House is and will always reach its dark fingers for more hunters to join the work. In these few days that have ensued, um, Sir Atticus, you've met someone at the Masquerade Ball. Would you say that you've been spending some time with them? Yeah, you know, going for walks in the park, on top of rooftops, visiting nice eateries, beating down monstrosities in the dark of night. You know, the usual thing that you do after a meet cute. Absolutely, for sure. Um, and I just want to point out that for the hunters remaining, um, we do have conditions on the board. So um, after I introduce the new threat, then I would suggest like doing some vulnerable scenes that's gonna be coming up. Uh, we're looking at the Explorer still having, I've got my eye on you. And Sir Atticus Wedlington Hughes the fourth has the Axeman cometh and kiss of the spider woman. And Ernest has barbs and spars, okay? So. Hmm. Hargrave House calls for more hunters in whatever way it does. 
I think there is someone that comes to Hargrave House in these coming days. Jack, who comes to Hargrave House and how did they get here? Well, uh, I think uh, I think between the two of you who are here, it'd probably be Atticus who would actually open the door because uh, Dame uh, Benbrook can't be, can't be bothered. Um, so I think there is a knock at the door uh, one morning and uh, when you open it, uh, you are just met with a, uh, a, a basically an entire crew of men, uh, all of whom are, seem to be dressed in uh, in what look to be like dockman, doc, like dockman's clothes. Like they, they clearly are of some kind of working class, but they are all carrying in these very large, um, about like six foot long crates. And they just begin to file into the house up towards one of the rooms in the house. And after about 10 of these crates are loaded in and the men are just sort of talking amongst themselves, you know, uh, one of them's bickering at the other to, you know, pull their own weight. Uh, there's a figure who enters last. Uh, they are kind of shrouded in, what looks to be like this kind of sort of a, like, iridescent, like black to red iridescent uh, cloak and hood. Um, but like a, more of like a wrap, not like a not like a red riding hood sort of thing, but more of just like a, a wrap. Um, but their face is concealed by a full mask of gold coins. Uh, and the figure just saunters past you. Uh, you see that their hand is kind of like this like tan color, but it has this sort of sheen to it. Uh, and uh, they just sort of flick their wrist towards you uh, as if to sort of dismiss you away from them. And uh, they follow up the procession of, of men and crates into this room. And they don't come out until all the crates are loaded in. And after a few hours, the men come down, but the figure in the wrapped cloak uh, remains upstairs. Yeah, I'm gonna go knock on the door and see who just moved in. Uh, I guess this is a good time, Vinny, uh, to introduce my character. Please do. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I will be playing the Undeniable. Uh, her name is Liat Kanan. Her look is long, straight black hair with a headdress made of gold coins and jewels, a poppy-colored embroidered abaya dress, and flawless broad skin. And her vice is to comfort the dying. Incredible. All right. So I will read the playbook blurb as normal, and then each one of us will give bestow, excuse me, bestow something on Ms. Kanan's personal quarters. You have always been the most beautiful person in the room. Your looks have opened doors for you as, for as long as you can remember. All the money and material things anyone could want laid at your feet. Artists have found inspiration in the brightness of your eyes, the delicate curve of your cheekbones, the plump softness of your lips. One such artistic work, a masterwork, rises above them all, for it captures the essence of you. It is, quite simply, more you than you. Lately, people sacrifice everything to be near you, to please you, and if they're lucky, to touch you. But what to do when you get bored with being one of the gods? Knowing this, what is in the Undeniable's personal quarters? Uh, do you want me to tell uh, the table what my masterwork is first? Yes, please. Uh, yeah. All right. So my masterwork is actually uh, it's a large statue carved in my likeness. Um, the question for that is, have you worshippers punished those foolish enough to touch it? Uh, and uh, the statue itself is kept in the archives of the British Royal Museum. Uh, and those who are 
you know, foolish enough to touch it uh, will have their dominant hand removed. And should they attempt to touch it a second time, they will have their other hand removed. And is the is the undeniable ageless? Uh, this is my oh, yes. first time with the playbook. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You need to be watching season one. <laughs> nice, nice subtle plot. Nice. There. <laughs> nice. Um, I am going to say because because like I just did a quick Google of uh, Kanan. Um, a particular name. Uh, it has some particular associations. So I'm going to give you an Anra Scarab which is basically a sort of like a very old uh, uh, seal, like ring. Cool, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should, do you, want to, do you want me to describe what the statue is or you want me to wait till the reflection? Let's wait until the reflection. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. I think I'll go with something that I, I like giving away. You have a little black book um, of friends that you've made in distant ports just for trade, contacts, whatever else. If uh, if we need to get something, you know who, who to go to, no matter where. I know people. I know a guy. Yeah. So. Or that guy's grandfather or whatever. Yeah. Like, you've got a network. Hmm. Given this hint... I'm going to say that you possess a papyrus, a scroll that has inscribed upon it in whatever language that you know, a true name and a true love. There's a tale told on this scroll and you possess it. I'm into it. All right, very cool. Okay, so we welcome Liat Kanan to Hargrave House to help the hunters, or not, depending on what she desires. So I think after this grand entrance, again, a few days have passed, things have been going on. Perhaps you hear of maybe one or two people having gone missing. You don't know whether you can possibly put this at the fig's door, for they are still out there at large. However, there seems to be some other problems brewing. You have been invited to visit the Royal Observatory at Greenwich and Miss Kanan, you are also um, present when they make this invitation. This is from Millicent Bryan. She is a scientist that works for a Dr. Lawrence Fisher, a leading astronomer. And she tells you that the other day, Dr. Fisher threw himself to his death from the top of the observatory, impacting on the inlaid brass prime meridian line. Dr. Fisher's behavior had become erratic before his death. He was repeating actions and saying, it's still happening. I couldn't stop it. I, I have to go back. Dr. Fisher has been researching some material that it was brought back from a failed Royal Navy survey voyage. The survey vessel, HMS Whippet, was discovered floating adrift in the Pacific with all crew missing and it was brought back by the HMS Persephone. The only soul aboard was Lieutenant James Allardis. James Allardis was in a state of distress as when confined to the infirmary at the Greenwich Hospital upon his return. Strangely, he was not on the crew manifest for the Whippet. Millicent has been experiencing some strange phenomena around Dr. Fisher's office, and she is concerned that something Dr. Fisher was studying may be causing these effects. On upon investigating James Allardis, she found two other men with the same name in Greenwich, an old retired sailor living in Greenwich Hospital and a 13-year-old midshipman studying at the Royal Hospital School. 
Both of them bear an uncanny resemblance to the James Allardis who was recovered from the Whippet. <laughs> Skeptical of Hargrave House, Millicent still nevertheless thinks that you might be able to help resolve this. Seraticus. What feelings of deja vu and lost time have you had over the past few days and what leads you to suspect it may be connected to Dr. Fisher's research? Uh, I have been finding myself at three particular locations. Uh, one, the garden. I assume that I just kind of walked there during breakfast or something and just forgot myself. Uh, the second is a little bit harder. I keep on showing up outside of a church. Um, I don't really know anyone there, but just kind of find myself there for some reason. The third is outside of, I don't know, it's some neighborhood that has a number of doctors and the like. Uh, there's a Dr. Virtue or Nobel or something like that, but uh, I just continually just find myself wandering there. I'm not really sure why. I think it's related to the late doctor's work, given that it's near his offices, that last location, I mean. Please take the condition deja vu. Guys, I'm going to be really vulnerable after all this, okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. So what this does, it opens up Two questions for this threat called Mean Times at Greenwich. So what did the voyage of the HMS Whippet discover and what went wrong on the voyage? Resolve the threat by destroying the source of the anomaly and breaking the strange temporal effects. Or complexity six, what did Dr. Fisher learn from the material discovered by the HMS Whippet and what power does it hold? Resolve the threat by containing the temporal anomaly so the material can be removed safely for storage or research. And if that is the case, then one of the hunters can take the source of the anomaly as a reward. And outside of the resolution of the threat is a question. Which of these James Allardises belongs to this time period? And how has he fallen victim to the anomaly? This is a complexity too. Help the present James Allardis remain in this time and the others move on before all are consumed by the paradox. And this does have a threat mask associated with it called Mask of the Clock. All right. All right. So you have Fig's Pigs on the table mm -hmm. with three questions that you must answer. And it is only considered resolved once the third question and the third fig is captured or destroyed, okay? And then now, mean times at Greenwich. Um, so, yeah, a bit to do. However, like I said, everybody except for Miss Kanan has conditions. So yeah. <laughs> you may choose to have a vulnerable scene uh, or two and then uh, clear some of these. <laughs> or you can get to investigating, whichever you choose. No, thank you. Vulnerability sounds great. Please. <laughs> Again, a vice has to be in play. And whomever is, whomever's vice it is should probably be the one setting up the scene. Do you want a vulnerable scene with me, Sir Atticus? I mean, it depends on how you're framing this scene. Dame Georgie of the humiliation, please. <laughs> or do you want to take your bets with uh, Miss Kanan? Oh, I think that's going to happen eventually. Like, I need I need at least two to be like a fully operating hunter. But well, if it's okay, I, th uh, um, I think Miss Kanan uh, oh. or Kanan. Uh, Kanan. Yeah, uh, okay. Miss Kanon would want to. She's most fascinated by the uh, this 
uh, Allardyce Fellow and this time anomaly. Uh, so she would be investigating that. But first, she, just because Atticus, you said you went out to go see her, I imagine maybe you'll have like a cigarette in your mouth or a cigar in your mouth when you do it. So it can be your vice. All right, then we'll just pick up where, where we left off. I am walking around like like a chimney. I have like three cigarettes in my mouth because I've been working through them as the workmen have been passing through. I just finally knock on the door. And what state do I find Miss Kanan? Uh, you would find that the door opens. Uh, there is a young man there uh, dressed in... Uh, and I forget what the the kind of jacket is. I think it's Shirwani, um, like the colorless kind of jacket, just fine embroidery, um, deep tan skin, same complexion as as Miss Kanon. Um, but uh, he opens the door and allows you in, and uh, you would find uh, Liat seated on uh, a circular bed, very lavish looking, uh, with lots of pillows, lots of uh, blankets, and and uh, the room itself looks probably like one of the bigger ones in the house, I think. Um, and it's covered in like this beautiful red silk wallpaper. Um, you see all these sort of like different artifacts from all across the world, just sort of decorating the walls. Um, a lot of them look to be though, uh, of uh, maybe like Assyrian uh, 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 like uh, origin or like uh, Middle Eastern. Mm -hmm. um, but again, she has stuff from Africa, from, uh, you know, from, uh, the British Isles, uh, from Australia, even. Uh, but uh, but I think yeah, she just come in, and you would see her. She's not in the ro the the kind of like hooded robe anymore. Um, she's in that like bright red dress with the the gold coins, sort of decorating her hair. And uh, oh, uh, hello. Certainly brought an entire crew to set up everything. It seems. Comfortable, cozy, ready to get to work, perhaps. Oh, at least two of those things. Atticus pauses for a moment. He doesn't know which ones that that, that she's referring to. No, no, I will. I'm here at Harvard House, and I will do nothing if not pull my weight. And what is it exactly that you will do to pull your weight, aside from lavish decorations, which he'll, he'll kind of look closely at some of the stuff from, uh, from Africa or South America, just like, oh, that, I think I saw like a modern iteration of these. What, yes. What do you do exactly? I exist. Is that not, is that not enough? Ravishing though you may be, I'm not exactly sure how that would work against, well, say, the family of killers that's going about the underside of London. No, but judging by your build and your disposition, I imagine that's something that you can take care of. Yes. Astute. I myself am more interested in, and she sort of holds up a dossier with like some notes on this uh, this case that was presented earlier. This uh, James Allardyce, HMS Whippet. Ah, the doctor. Yes. Yes. What's your take on it? Well, I have no take on it. I haven't uh, I haven't investigated myself just yet, but I'm I'm intrigued nonetheless. Hmm. Well, you have curiosity. That's well enough as it is. See, you're a fan of tobacco. Yes. Uh, rather recent acquisition, uh, but I do have my particular tastes. Are you a fan? Not particularly. I do enjoy some hashish from here. And uh, she'll, uh, she'll snap and the, the young servant boy will go over. <laughs> and pull out just this whole sort of hookah kit with uh, bowls of fresh hashish. Um, you even see like one of the bowls is red with filled with like this kind of like red, uh, like red crumbly dust. Uh, if uh, if you were keen on it you, or sniffed it, you'd probably recognize it as uh, some kind of opium. Oh yeah, he'll definitely sniff it. Like mm -hmm. perhaps not this early in the morning, but one 
someday maybe I'll take you up on the offer. You know what they say, it's 11 p.m. somewhere. <laughs> I have a feeling we'll get along quite well, madam. But far be it from me to interrupt your studies. Uh, I bid you adieu. Yes, I suppose I'll be seeing you in the evening then. Good luck out there. Likewise. And, uh, and Atticus will leave, uh, probably leaving the lingering smell of tobacco smoke and ashes on the floor. Uh, and then because it is my vice, uh, mm. you invite the other player to ask you a question about your past or to create a clue for one of the active threats. Uh, Jack, do you have like a strong grip on like who this character is? Uh, I'm still kind of figuring her out. All right. Then in that yeah. case, uh, we'll go for a clue, hopefully something with, um, the Greenwich threat, given that we established that she was looking over paperwork regarding it. Sure. Yeah. That's a problem. Not a problem. So um, <clears throat> given that, yeah, just if that's the case, just go ahead and put, you know, Atticus TBD in the, in the clues list for uh, Greenwich. Dame Georgie, did you want to line up a vulnerable with someone? Yeah. Honestly, the scene I can see happening may end up just giving me a condition instead, which I'm <laughs> <laughs> because, like, I think as like Sir Atticus, you're sort of like like leaving this room uh, still a little bit upbeat for like what has happened because like it's like oh there's a new hunter and like uh, she seems nice. I think Dame Georgie is like kind of sulking and like trying to sneak out of his room because like he can't stay in there all day and he looks like shit like like he took like a dunk in like the, like the the river Thames um like his clothes are all raggled he, like pretty wet um very strong smell of beer on him uh and amongst like other uh, other different like smells like salt water um some like i don't know gross shit or whatever it's it's looks terrible Ah, the bouquet of London's underworld. Georgie, you've been out and about. I wouldn't say underworld per se. I would say just a, a fine disagreement. Georgie. So in what world do you get into a disagreement and you're not the one on top? people who have certain legal obligations such as being alive and being older than I am ah the old boys uh, club mm -hmm. say no more I understand however <laughs> you do smell of a particular bouquet and uh I feel we have to take extreme measures, Georgie. Really now? I'm going to go into a hall closet and get a bucket. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think like as like Georgie is just sort of leaning on the uh, wall, still, cut, still pretty hungover from the previous night. I think it, this is just very easily you just splash this bucket right on top of Georgie in the middle of the hall, I imagine. Oh, we're we're taking you out to the garden and we're just like dunking <laughs> oh. cold water. Yes. Oh my goodness. It's a, I mean, does that qualify as yeah. the, this yes. is mortifying. <laughs> this is mortifying. I'm going to say there's even like some troughs out there in the, mm. in the garden, like, you know, for, for water, helping watering the, uh, the plants. 
and uh, you know, you could conceivably sober up Dame Georgie by a splash in one and then a dunk in the other. No, it's the smell, please. We're both men of the world. I've had to deal with one hangover too many and that might be a bit much. I think being dunked with cold water from uh, <laughs> fresh from London is enough. And then maybe like a small breakfast is like a solace of just like, here, it's mm -hmm. eggs and potato. It, it is the food of the people, but it should help you. Mm -hmm. I think it's just like still, in, I don't think Georgie like gets like, once you bring him back inside from ducking in and like serving this breakfast, Georgie still is like sitting in like these wet clothes. Yep. Does not engage in like trying to either like take off his shirt or anything like that. Nope. Just moping, like eating pre breakfast, just staring at you. And Atticus, Atticus is just kind of here for it. One, good to see that Georgie is human too. Mm -hmm. uh, especially after that entire thing at the Blue Feather Society. Like, this is the other side of the whole, like, oh, well, you are, you are landed, you are titled, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, but I think he, I think Atticus just waits with you. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you can get back upstairs after you like mm -hmm. get something in your stomach. I think, I think Atticus will just ask, so this older fellow, the one with the legal obligation and being alive and all that, mm -hmm. is that, is that a circumstance that you'd like to continue or? Hmm. Uh from what I know about you, Sir Atticus, that, that is a very interesting question because I can't do anything about it, legally speaking. I have my own resources, so like even if were this older fellow were to die, it wouldn't be too much of an increase or decrease in monetary value oh heavens no i was saying that maybe we ruin his day some other way death is too simple too straightforward when it comes oh. to dealing with honor and the like oh he's already embarrassed enough by me <laughs> you don't say particular stain not even good enough to wipe his shoe on mm. yes i don't I don't know who this fellow is. Mm -hmm. I already don't like them. No. No, I don't think you would enjoy him. But, but it's preferable to talking to him rather than the, the lady of the house. Ah, one of those. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're ever out and about... And apparently that is something that we do at Hargrave House, go to parties and mm. all that sort of thing. And you do see this gentleman. Maybe you make an introduction. I can do a wonderful repeat performance of the Blue Feather Society. Mm. Yes, I, that would be very interesting to introduce you to, uh, to them, to that side of the family i think that that's a good like point yeah. to the scene unless uh, uh i'm i'm going to invite sir atticus to ask a question about uh jane dame georgie because that feels like very appropriate because i i've been tiptoeing about like the identity of these folks because the, it does have to do with some backstory yeah I think I think Atticus is gonna just straight up ask like, who are they to you? You make it sound that side of the family makes it sound like it's a relation of some kind, but of course, of course, uh, I am. I've been born into wealth, but I've also had my own prospects into this world. I've uh, I have my own businesses, mostly with uh, linen and uh, silk and all sorts of textiles. Mm. But however, the family money is just rich, old money, uh, particularly the Carters. Ah. So 
Lord James Carter is my father. L Lady Danielle Carter is my mother. And we don't particularly get along. And even though by birthright I am the eldest in my family, my younger brother is, has all the sort of inheritance, as it were. It's interesting. Downright peculiar is what it is, but hmm. as somebody who has a similarly rough relationship with parentage, I can understand. Mm -hmm. There comes a point where you say, damn the family name and just go on about your life. Mm -hmm. And given that someone as worldly as you, it seems you've done quite well for yourself. Yeah. yeah. Well, better than my brother. He, <laughs> he can't. He's honestly the worst decision that's going to happen to the Carter name. <laughs> I want to ask more, but I can't. <laughs> and I didn't address this the last time. So for the previous scene, uh, Sir Atticus, uh, which condition? Uh, I think my wonderful conversation with our new guest will hopefully wipe away the kiss of the spider woman. Um, because it has been a bit since Spider Lady was handled, and we emphasize the passing of time. You might still have a bit of a welt on your on your palm, though. Just saying. Yeah, but like, but like the threat of like an evil <laughs> Spider Lady kidnapping me should be gone. Okay. All right. Okay. Whew. All right. Possible problem later. <laughs> and then yeah. this this particular vulnerable scene, which uh, condition? Getting rid of the deja vu. I think bucket of cold water and just the uh, the routine sure. of like the day to day is enough. Okay. As as well, sort of ruminating on the past of like like having disjointed families. <laughs> Solidarity. <laughs> what about you, Dame Georgie? Um, I've been technically out of this uh, play for a little bit, and so I think just by the nature of me saying down low and just like effectively showing up looking horrendous into Hargrave House in the middle of the night, I think I do get rid of my condition. I've got my eyes on you. And we've gotten, and then again, when you've come up with the clue, please fill it in on the sheet for the Greenwich threat. And now I invite everyone to let me know where they want to go for day phase, for the remainder of day phase. I would like to go to the infirmary to check out uh, Mr. Allardyce, interview him. Okay. Yeah. So uh, James Allardyce, the Royal Navy Lieutenant who was found, he's located in the infirmary of the Greenwich Hospital. Yeah. Okay. So, That's the one. okay. So we're going to go ahead and visit him. All right. And then uh, Dame Georgie, where do you want to go? These figs, I don't think anyone has gotten actually to the pie shop itself yet. No. So that's uh, best to take a look because that's been uh, on the board for a, a while now. And Sir Atticus. I would like to also go after uh, Figs Pigs. Okay. I don't recall the locations that I can go to. Give me a second. So, well, you've got Titus Fig the father that was doing his little sing-song thing as his family members escaped. He's located in, in Bethlehem, Bedlam, Royal Hospital. Something about that possibly rings a little bell for you, hmm. Sir Atticus. You don't know why, but that sounds a little familiar. And you smell a scent of paint. And then there's also, <clears throat> uh, again, the shop, their, their, their uh, pie shop. And of course, the area around the pie shop. I mean, they were very well known because their, their pies were very good and quite delicious. Yeah, I think I'll go and canvas the neighborhood as that nostalgic feeling. I will come back to it, but I think I want to stay grounded for the moment. Mm -hmm. Okie doke. So I'm just going to go to the respective locations. I mean, unless anybody wants to travel together and have a little scene, but, you know, that is up to you. Let's go to Greenwich Hospital first. This canon, that is a fine set of neoclassical buildings on the riverfront. 
a retirement home provided by the Navy for former sailors to live out their days. It also houses an infirmary for wounded sailors, as James Allardis is. Paint the scene for everyone. What strange customs have been adopted in the hospital that reflect the naval heritage of its residents? What strange customs have been adopted in the hospital? And again, feel free and put that into the London tab for future reference if needed. Okay. The uh, orderlies, their uniforms have, uh, their, the tailoring and the, uh, the construction of them have sort of a similar, uh, similar but not too similar uh, vibe to uh, naval uh, uniforms. They're a little bit more uh, minimalistic than what the Royal Navy would actually have, but similar kind of concept. In the corners of every door in this hospital, there is a sort of like symbol of like an anchor just to ground things down. I think there's just a lot of citrus on the menu. Gotta combat that scurvy no matter where you go. Sure. Absolutely. I don't know much about sailing. It's fine. It's fine. Do you, how do you present yourself, Miss Kanan? Well, I am alone. I don't have a, an entourage with me, uh, surprising though that may be. Um, but I think she's changed out of the red poppy number um, to something a bit more fitted. Uh, say it's uh, like a, like a pantsuit, which, you know, trousers for the day, shocking. And she also doesn't wear her hair up. So, you know, even more of a scandal. Um, but the, the pantsuit itself uh, almost resembles sort of a, like a, sort of like a hybrid between what I'm, you know, men's wear and women's wear at the time. Um, and she's wearing a corset with it, but uh, it's made entirely of peacock feathers. I can only imagine the feathers also coming, like the ones that aren't necessarily tamped down, like framing your face. Yeah, where... a little like a collar, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you cut quite the striking figure when you stride up and ask to see Mr. Allardis, or excuse me, Lieutenant Allardis. There's a doctor that greets you. First, he's a little bit officious because what are you doing here? And why are you like, you know, wanting to see um, Lieutenant Allardis? He needs his rest. Do you ignore him and then just try to find? Um... Yeah, I mean, she wants to be helped. So I think it's more about like, I think it's more about just using my move giveth and turning him into a servant. Excellent. All right. So let's read that off if you don't mind. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, so the move is giveth. Anytime, at any time, uh, I can declare that a side character is secretly one of my worshippers. Mm -hmm. Describe how the side character subtly or not so subtly debases themselves before you in the scene, then scar your reflection. Uh, whenever you make a gift with something from your personal quarters to a worshiper, they will do exactly as you say with no questions asked, uh, up to and including destroying themselves. If you demand information from them, it may come in the form of a clue at your discretion. Uh, another hunter can also debase themselves as a follower of mine, um, but uh, we'll get into that if that comes up, which I'm sure it will because both of you, you know, just want to worship me by the end of this. Welcome to having it an undeniable in the game exactly. line. <laughs> um but yes i will uh um does this doctor have a name um i will let you uh give the doctor the good doctor a name uh it'll be dr friedman how about that okay. um, no problem but add uh, them to your add them to your list of worshipers somewhere on your sheet mm -hmm. and then how does dr friedman debase himself I meet with one of his secretaries at first, who is doesn't know who I am, but is very put off by my uh, by my attire. Um, and I think he comes out of his office kind of in a you know kind of blustery mood, sort of like red face. Just he seems to be very kind of perturbed with the day. Um, but as soon as he sees uh, Miss Kanan uh, in the presence of the secretary, he uh, just sort of claps his mouth with his hand, like almost is, you know, in shock that she is in front of him. And uh, he will get down on both knees and place his hands on her knees and uh, places like bow his head. And uh, he'll just profusely apologize for making her wait as long as he did, which it wasn't, you know, a very, very long time. Um, but she'll put her hand on the top of his head and 
tell him to rise to his feet. And I think all the while his secretary is just sort of like looking at this going, what the hell? Indeed. But yes, go ahead and scar your reflection. If you do nothing else, he will bring you to Lieutenant Allardis's room, bowing and scraping all the while. See to it that we are left alone. Absolutely, mistress. I'm so sorry. Yes. I'm so sorry. Please. And uh, when he leaves, uh, should just sort of stand by the door, see how James is doing? You see him over by the window. He is dressed in the institutional pajamas of this place. Sun bronzed, salt scoured. And he seems to be a man in his late 20s. You can't see his eyes just yet. He's just looking out at, outside the window, across from the door. And he's, he's got his arms around himself as if he's trying to hold himself in or down. And he doesn't respond when you open up the door. Is he sitting up or lying down? He's sitting up. Mm, Mr. Allardyce. What is happening? That's my name. Yes, it is. Happening again. Uh, again. Happening again. This is going to happen again. And as he's saying this and murmuring this, like litany, he is turning to you and you see his eyes are wild. They are shifting like back and forth, up and down as if he's trying to pinpoint on something and he cannot. Yeah, I think uh, Miss Kanan will just sort of look at him kind of with pity in her eyes, uh, seeing that he's clearly in, in some kind of distress that he can't escape. But uh, she'll very carefully approach and say, uh, will you sit with me? So, this isn't where I should be. Um, I, 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 I was sitting and I, I can't. I. You are still seated. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I, it has to be stopped. She'll put her hand gently on his shoulder and ask, uh, what has to be stopped? And he slowly like looks at your hand on his shoulder as if that's grounding him. Uh, this movement. We saw, we saw something. When his eyes meet yours, he is almost locking you in his gaze as if you can be on the ship with him even though you don't see what he sees. But it's almost like every time he locks his gaze with you, you can see him going through the ship, looking around for something. What are you looking for? And I'd like to do the investigation move. Okay, information move. How do you feel when he's doing this talking to you? He's not really um, looking at you where he's he's looking too intensely at you. What are you yeah. what are you thinking? I mean, she doesn't mind the, the the looks, but I think that again, I think she's she's pity she pities him. Uh, she in a way knows what it's like to be out of time. So I think that there's a mm -hmm. there's a sense of empathy there that she has for him, even though their their conditions aren't the same. Correct. Okay. So, yeah, in this case, um, since you're talking with him, I would use presence. Presence. That's going to be a 12. Nice. Okay, give me a second. I got to mark down that I got to give you another mastermind clue. Give me a second. All right. Yeah, on a 12, he's murmuring. It's happened. It's happening. It's going to happen again. And suddenly, he stops. His mouth drops open, and then you hear issuing from his mouth, even though it doesn't look like it's coming from him, you hear a discordant but strangely compelling tune comes out of his lips, and that is your clue. Interesting. And he will look away from you and then back at you again as if he's finally seeing you there like in his space, and he is shocked, as if, am I here? Am I, am I, 
where I'm supposed to be? I don't that is know. what I'm here to help you figure out. But it will take some time. Time. And he immediately grabs your shoulders and says, time is the one thing that is not certain. And he will realize what he's done and he will let go as if you've burned him. She won't say anything. I think she just sort of stand up when he, when it looks like he's just sort of back into his sort of- mm -hmm. uh, Remembers again, yeah. Yeah. Um, and as she leaves, uh, I imagine Dr. Friedman was standing outside, not like listening, but just, you know, expectantly waiting. Uh, and uh, when uh, when Liat comes out, she looks to him and uh, she's putting away her purse. She says, uh, make sure that he's well fed. Your meal today. Yes, mistress. And he does a deep obeisant bow as you leave and leaving maybe wisps of your peacock feathers in your wake. I oh, know, it's, it's too finely crafted for that. <laughs> but maybe just like wafting perfume. Ah, there you go. All right, so let's head over to Atticus and Georgie. Do you think you took the same cab? Yeah. All right. We're heading in the same direction effectively. Yes. Yeah. Georgie's good with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think you may get out like a little bit earlier than um, Georgie does because Georgie will go out to the shop itself. And if you are canvassing the neighborhood, Sir Atticus, I imagine that you're going to be like on foot mm -hmm. for most of that. Um, so yeah, there are signs on the shop, King Georgie. And um, they're basically saying that uh, the figs are on holiday indefinitely mm -hmm. and the pie shop will be reopened when they return. Mm -hmm. That's what it says on the signs in the front at least. Mm -hmm. So don't know if you make your way elsewhere. The shop itself is, um, their not only their pie shop but it's also like their living quarters above it mm -hmm. so yeah i definitely will go inside the pie shop if i recall correctly we were unofficially hired by scotland yard to investigate this because they don't want a pie hysteria so yes i think we do at least one of us has the keys to this and i think it would be safe to say that dame georgie has a key yes I'm just going to enter in the, to the pie shop. Okay. So I think <clears throat> you go in through the back door, which leads into the kitchen. So mm -hmm. that's first off. Bundles of herbs and garlic hanging from the ceiling. Enormous brick oven and a light dusting of flour on most surfaces still. So paint the scene for everyone. The figs work, the figs enjoy working together. What do you see that confirms this? So a set of matching aprons uh, of different sizes, according to who wears them. Uh, we know who wears them based on the flowery embroidery on the front. The room is kind of on the small side. So whoever is baking in here has to be very comfortable with stepping around people, maneuvering in a very precise fashion, just as though people know each other as well as they know that they're of their own heartbeat. Building on that, I think that the precision is to the point that the ground itself, like the wood is warped just from the same steps in the same places over and over and over again. Are you looking anywhere specific here, Dame Georgie? I'm trying to get a general lay of like the building. I probably will go up front see like if there's stairs anywhere heading upstairs oh yes there's the the, the steps like out in the hallway mm -hmm. leading up to the upstairs flat for sure and then there's also a door that looks like it's leading down to a basement Ooh, basement there's also the front counter of course as well mm -hmm. but again you know you're just lucky that it's blocked off by the signs mm -hmm. so people can't peek in 
because there's as you can see beyond the signs like in the the cracks showing the outside you can see there are people that are stopping to gawk and point a little bit well i think i'm going to go towards the basement because that's where you keep all the secret stuff basement yeah i, I think you're hit by a bit of a smell before you even make it downstairs do you still go i already know that they are cannibals okay they have to have a place for the bodies okay when you make it downstairs, there are walls covered in streaks of dried blood, a preponderance of bones with bits of meat still on them, written on the walls in ash. All praise the great he Sal. Paint the scene. This is where the figs' victims met their grisly ends. Looking around, how do you know the kills were quick and painless? And I apologize if I mentioned detail that went beyond safety. So just be careful. There is a, like a small cement block. It's featureless, except for it has like a divot where you can assume one would rest their head, but standing uh, beside it is a very heavy mallet, um, the weight of which would surely end someone very quickly. Even though that the smell is very strong here, the blood isn't hasn't been splattered all across the space. It's kept to one corner, contained, as though the victims didn't struggle before they died. And can you give me the prompt one more time? This is where the Fig's victims met their grisly ends. Looking around, how do you know the kills were quick and painless? I think that there is a bottle of a sedative that is nearby. Maybe a couple of little pies that uh, they use to hide the sedative as they fed it to a victim. Sure. So, Dame Georgie, you are down essentially on the killing floor. What would you like to do here? Great he so that that's interesting. Uh, is there any sort of other types of writing, either on the wall, on the table somewhere, any... Just generally looking around for like sort of motivation for cannibalism because that's a bit of a weird thing to suddenly to have your entire family do. Information move with reason. Oh. That is a nine. You suddenly feel as if you are retracing your steps. Like you are going in reverse. Away from where you are actually looking. You can see, as you wave your hand in front of your face, how it's almost showing your movement in the air pattern of your hand moving through space and time. And then it speeds up and goes back to where you were. Take the condition deja vu. You find when you settle in back in that moment, you find not near the killing corner, but over off to the side as if just laid there on the shelf. There's a book of nursery rhymes and any references to birds have been crossed out. Sir Atticus, you are out and around how are you dressed by the way no atticus wouldn't dress casually i think atticus is dressed for a hunt atticus atticus has has the bird and he probably has the the colt holstered he's he's dressed for action ah <laughs> <laughs> uh. hmm hmm <laughs> I, think as you're, I think as you're dressed like this, there's a bit of bustle around here in shortage. Mm -hmm. You feel a bump. Okay. Feel and several bumps. Mm, People no. running into you. Okay. I am definitely keeping an eye out for pickpockets, given that this is shortage. They move. What do you think will go wrong if you fail or lose your nerve? Uh, if I fail, 
most of the stuff that I, I have for weapons. <laughs> None of them <laughs> that I want stolen. Um, they're not going to steal the burden. I will say that even if you miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm like really attached to the Colt Navy revolver too. Um, I think if if I miss that I have I have to mark off like an item in my personal quarters as like something that was used. So is this vitality? Oh, I'm sorry. Am I am I grabbing the pickpocket as they're doing yes, this? I'm gonna thing? say I'm gonna say your reaction is definitely going to be physical. So go ahead and and you know roll with vitality for this day move. Heck yeah, that is a six plus a three plus a three. Uh, that is a 12. Nice. <laughs> Somebody sees Sir Atticus and thinks, I'm going to pickpocket that guy. <laughs> well, he's going to damn well try because he's a bit of a punk. You notice with your hunting senses, and I'm going to say smell because you know, and this kid has an eye-watering smell. I mean, granted, like, you know, people aren't exactly like, you know, full of hygiene around here. However, you know, you think you would know better. But it's like Georgie this morning. Yeah. Okay. Oh, probably worse. about worse. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. So when he bumps you, you definitely notice because it's like, whoa, that smells like hitting you like a brick. And uh you see out of the corner of your eye, he has his hand coming out of your pocket do you i'm not gonna say engage but i mean like you know do you snatch his wrist yes hello lad i i, I mean like first he has like a hard look on his face like he's gonna try to like you know bluff his way or like just kind of like heart like you know beat his way out of this but then he's like he's looking at you up and down and realizing hmm probably shouldn't have done this but anyway i i didn't mean anything by it i just you know, just needed to make a living. Fair enough. Can I go now? Depends. What do you know of the figs, boy? Uh, and he's kind of resigned to the fact that you're not letting him go until you get info. <laughs> and he starts to get a tender look on his face when you ask about the figs. What's to say? I really like those figs, yeah? What of it? So they put people in their pies. Maybe those people deserve to be in their pies. You ever consider that? I mean, Mrs. Fig was the nicest. And I like Patrick well enough. I'm the only one he spoke to like, like a person. C can, can I go now? Have you seen Patrick about? Uh, he just, he's flits in and out. I mean, you know, he's never really quite there. No, it didn't sound like it. No. Yeah, they're they they kind of split to the to what four winds? Yeah, and he's like rubbing a finger on his very grimy face. Yeah. So, have you eaten, lad? No. Just want to get in some money. Obviously, not from you. Atticus is going to change the grip. So that it's a handshake. What's this on, sir? Sir, already you're learning, boy. Allow me to introduce myself, Sir Atticus Wellington Hughes. Ah, oh, tough. I could have gotten a white Bitcoin out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I like the cut of your jib, boy. What say this? Is that good? <laughs> I treat you to lunch and you walk me about Shoreditch and show me where to go and where not to go. Oh, cool. <laughs> Best deal I had all day, sir. <laughs> I don't know about that. All right. So, yeah, we'll, we'll say that you can, you can like wander off with him. Oh, I would like to use in want of privilege. I am leveraging my family name to make a new contact. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> sure. Oh, just like spreading your presence, presence all over the damn place. All right, great. And making uh, sure this kid gets a bath. Are you kidding me? Atticus is not, <laughs> Atticus is not rolling around like this. We try to sneak up on Patrick. They're going to smell us coming. Are you kidding me? That's all right. Funny. All right. That's fine. 
Uh, that is an 11 on the dice. Jesus H. All right. Um, so uh, there's, there's that. Okay. Uh, that is a 12 total. So uh, as a reminder, uh, not only uh, will they help me for the remainder of the day phase, mm -hmm. any information they give is part of uh, is a clue at your discretion. Mm -hmm. Any roles that uh, our young street urchin whose name I haven't gotten yet uh, assists with, I get advantage on. And finally, they lean in and whisper something about the beast. I increase my hunt count by one with an O. And then I get to ask someone. You don't want this kid leaning in just yet. I'm just telling no, you. No, 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 man. No, I think, I think, I think after we get this kid like, like decent, decent enough to like actually go and get some food and not get kicked out immediately before they realize I'm moneyed. Like I think over lunch, he's like, "Hey, yeah, what's this? I also had this thing about this crazed beast. What? Yeah, 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 exactly. Something like that. Something like that. Um, okay, so." The clue that you got for the day move, because since it was a 12, it's like I wanted to give you something special for it. I think he'll also mention, but he does this begrudgingly because it's like, you know, you're being nice to him. I mean, he doesn't want to tell on the figs because he really likes them mm -hmm. as people. But he he will say that um, he has seen a collection, and this is the clue, a collection of skeletal hands, each one smaller than the next. Kind of like that bag of tea he got there, so, right? <laughs> yeah although these were all man killers beasts even and i grab like a porcupine quill uh i don't remember fighting this one regardless uh something like that i suppose before we move on uh may i ask one of my fellow hunters to give me a hint of the beast's approach it could be a feeling a smell something that shows that it is getting closer it's a low like low growl that you hear uh it's in passing though and it's a, i imagine there's a lot of different activity going on so you almost doubt that you hear heard it but thinking back on it okay yeah so from here miss canon where are you going uh, well, first, I have to narrate how my uh, masterwork is blemished or scarred. So let's explain that a little bit further, if you don't mind. So the Undeniable has a masterwork that is, again, more you than you, and it gets messed up every time you scar your reflection. So, um, yeah, go ahead and track how that happens and let us know. Yeah, so we, uh, we go beneath uh, the British Royal Museum where it's located now. And there is uh, an archive of, uh, of works that aren't on display, but are either protected or stolen. Uh, but in this case, the, uh, this masterwork is protected. Um, she is finagled with, uh, with uh, the museum to make sure that only those who are worthy are able to look upon it. Um, but it is a very large, large stone uh, statue of a woman, uh, what appears to be a woman at first, but it looks to be of some sort of like, uh, it's, it's, a, it's like a clay, uh, it's, a, it's a clay sculpture, but the, uh, the forms seem reminiscent of something you'd find in like Mesopotamia or Assyria um, or Babylon. But uh, it's a feminine form, but there are features about it that seem odd. Uh, she has this long hair that goes down past her hips, but it's being held up aloft by two owl-like creatures. Uh, her feet are like, like uh, almost like uh, uh, not raptors, like velociraptors, but like like birds of prey, um, clawed in that in that in that way. Um, her hands as well uh, have these sort of long talons. Um, and beneath her, uh, underneath her foot, uh, underneath her feet, or claws, or whatever you want to call them, uh, are just rows and rows of skulls. But uh, we see that out of uh, the eyes of these skulls, 
uh, they start to crumble and uh, insects begin to pour out. Okay, thank you. All right, this is happening. You may even feel it happening a little bit to your masterwork. Where do you go next from here? Um, I think she wants to talk to Dr. Friedman more since he's been treating uh, patients here. Yeah. Um, so we go to the, go to his office. Mm -hmm. um, or did I did I say that I left the hospital last time? I don't remember. I don't recall, but you can totally. It seemed like you know it's fine. Uh, it seemed like I was leaving the office, telling him to go feed him his lunch. So. Yes, that's right. Yeah, you were telling him to, to feed that. him his lunch. <laughs> um, I'll go visit another James Allardyce since there's many. Yeah. Um, In fact, here, this is, the, again, Greenwich Hospital. You can also find the retired sailor named James Allardyce. Yeah. Um, Could we actually say that uh, as, as I was preparing to leave or uh, that uh, Dr. Friedman actually uh, pulled me aside with all due respect to mm -hmm. tell me that there was another one here? Yes, absolutely. And then, yeah, so uh, following him and his lead, she will, uh, she'll go visit this older gentleman. When you get to the door of his room, you see him, old, white hair and bent. However, he is in the uncannily exact position that the younger James Allardyce was in, in his room, looking away from the door. Mm -hmm. not acknowledging your presence and murmuring to himself a little bit. Mr. Allardyce. Uh, he, this, this one will turn to you and you see he has a white beard and very haunted eyes. Like seeing, like that far seeing look that folks of the sea will normally have. And he's got like tattoos on both arms and they're looking quite faded but when he speaks it's with a gravelly voice he will look at you admiringly with those sad haunted eyes and he will say i'll tell you a story as true as the day i heard it a tale of a cursed ship and a doomed crew Lord to the very bottom of the sea. And he kind of pauses as if he's on pause for a few seconds before he looks up at you and says, What, what are you doing here? Who, who, who are you? I am of no importance. You, however, uh, I am interested in a great deal. How long have you been here? Yes, it seems. I, uh, I gave my life to the sea. I, um, uh, boat member standing on the old boat and just feeling like I was standing still as it rocked me. And I stood there watching the waves and something under the waves. Like yesterday. Yesterday. Or today. Or... When was the last time you were on VHMS with it? You were a crewman on it, yes? He has that waggle of the very elderly and he contemplates this before looking back at you again. And then he contemplates it again with the waggle going very quickly as if his head is on some sort of like uh, vibration. And he'll immediately snap to you and go, why? 
It was only yesterday. Was it then? Yes. And what happened yesterday? It's what's going to happen today. And that is, and I'd like to do, make the information move. Sure. Uh, composure. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Um, that is a three total. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark mask. <laughs> and already it begins. Um, question, is it a mask of the past or a mask of the future? It will be a mask of the past. Okay. You will also have the condition deja vu as you are asking him this question and then somehow in the next second he appears back where he was by the by the window she looks around the room feeling out of sorts Miss Allardyce uh, his head waggles to you again yes you are who I am of no importance who I am is of no importance you are however important what happened today, yesterday, tomorrow? All times. He will actually smile at you as he looks directly at you and focuses in this moment. He says, all times meet this place. And they see strange glowing lights in the sky. And his as he's saying this, like his voice goes in and out from being in his 20s to his elderly waggly self to a young man, a young boy, and then back again. Your clue is strange glowing lights in the sky. Thank you, Mr. Allardyce. Um, I guess I overstayed my welcome. I should, I should get going. Did I? answer yesterday's question did i did i do it not yet but hopefully soon and, and he uh, nods yep i'll turn to step out and i know this isn't like a part of the move but uh i think because of the time stuff mm -hmm. when she comes out Dr. Friedman is there, but as he presented himself earlier, mm -hmm. so not groveling, not like, uh, not as uh, enthusiastic about her being there. Um, and uh, I, so I will give him up as a worshiper, as if like time sort of put him back to a place before he recognized me. Sure. That is what you want to do. But you still keep the scar, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Atticus, did I give you a clue? No, let me go back to Jane, Dame Georgie first before I address your other clue. <clears throat> Pardon. <laughs> Dame Georgie. Yeah, so you're in the shop seeing the book. It's an actual real book, by the way. It's like, yeah. it's not like, it's not like a hallucination or anything. And you got a nine on that one? Yeah, and he gave me deja vu as, yep. as okay. well as the book. Okay. Feels as though I've been here before. I've walked these steps. Quite familiar, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this the same family? Have I had... I don't think I've had these pies, but the blood... The blood is always familiar. It's less burnt this time. Where do you least, go from here? I'm going to make my way upstairs towards uh, the living quarters. Sure. This is about as diametrically different as you can get. <laughs> when you come up to this up upstairs flat, it's full of comfy beds, delicate cream-colored wallpaper, and there's the smell of lemon and mint. The figs were a loving family, paint the scene. 
looking around. How do you know this? I think in one of the door frames, uh, there is measure of like little notches measuring the height of like the fig's children as they grow older and i think for it patrick in particular it just like suddenly just cuts off at a certain height uh there are on a mantle there are four little porcelain figurines of pigs of varying size and each pig is wearing one of the decorative aprons from downstairs with the name painted on it and the prompt is just what showed that all of them lived here together. They were a loving family. How do you know this? <sighs> There's a picture. Mm-hmm. There's like, an, they shelled out for an actual picture, dressed as well as they could, and then sat for a portrait. I think they keep it in a place of honor. Oh, very nice. It always boils back down to family as I, I'm staring like at this portrait. But in mm. their case, though, you mm. see the the love in their faces by the gesture of how they're positioned in the painting, mm. where it's like maybe there's a hand on a shoulder or the proximity of each other in accordance to where they're sitting or standing. How do you feel about this? thinking on your own family, Dame Georgie. The figs aren't different from my family. But uh, I suppose there is a difference that they all love each other. But I think it's more of an inwards versus outwards thing. And instead of taking the worst of their humanity and turning on themselves, they turn outwards. This is only a natural repercussion of loving families. This is humanity's true nature. Take the condition loving family. (laughs) Um, And could I also mark XP for uh, did you deliver a chilling dead-eyed monologue about the horrors of the world? Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Do you do anything else here while you are up in their their home, the oh. homey part of their home? I should say. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm rifling through their belongings. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. Go ahead and uh, information move with reason, please. Okay, okay. Black. Um, I probably should not rifle through their belongings because that's a five. Jesus. <laughs> Well, let me ask you something. Do you want to run with the miss or do you want to put on a mask? Oh, I want to run with the miss. I specifically really want to see a fig. Gotcha. All right. Give me a second. Literally just going to the worst possible solution. (laughs) Getting jumped by a fig. All right. Yes. Hey, sometimes it's the most exciting thing ever. (laughs) Dame Georgie lives dangerously. (laughs) Yeah. Sorry, I just want to check something before I say what's gonna happen. Okay. I think as you're rifling through their stuff, shame on you, you hear a in the other room think I get very still slow my breathing down and I'm just going to creep trying to see what's making that noise when you approach the door and you kind of peek around the frame you will see you see a very tall woman in the other room And she looks like she's in front of the closet, a closet. And she's just kind of like standing there and then kind of like giving you that upward glare. You don't belong here. And you can see that she's got one sleeve loose on her body. 
Apparently she's missing an arm. Mm. Why are you in my house? You've abandoned your house. You abandoned your right to the house. Surrender now. Turn yourself in, and you may see your husband again. <laughs> Those that don't belong in the house shall be expelled. And she stomps on the floor once. <laughs> and you hear, I think you hear a large swish going towards your head. Mm-hmm. Night move. This is dangerous. Oh, of course. I am afraid that that I I will be guillotined and my head will topple towards the floor. Sounds most excellent. Not only will your head be guillotined, but she will take it and help her sons erect a nice little shrine to the great Hisa. Hey. So I would say vitality in this case, if you want to get the hell out of the way. Oh man, I wish I had a, a, had Atticus's uh, personal quarters in this moment. Uh, but no, I don't have anything I can roll and roll with. Do I get disadvantage because I do have the condition loving family? Yes. Talk about doubling down. <laughs> okay. Well. Oh, that felt support. I'm not picking that up. It's it's gone forever. Okay. I'll do that. Not too bad. An eight. Okay. Describe to me how you get out of the way of a convenient scythe that has popped out of the ceiling and has gone whoosh well, by your be- head. Well, I think... Hortensia was probably expecting Sir Atticus to be here rather than me because like Sir Atticus gets into more dangerous stuff probably direct confrontations and probably has been spying on us for a little bit so but I'm had sure time. yeah yeah I, but I'm shorter than Sir Atticus so so <laughs> I so like like as it's coming down i'm able to see it so like i could just like take a step forward and it just comes like right down behind me i'm also going to say by the hair of your chinny chin chin because as you're doing this again you see that weird shifting again where it's like you know like yeah god i cannot remember like time lapsing Mm mm-hmm and so I think I want to change your condition of deja vu into out of time. Oh, I am in so much danger. This is the worst. This is the worst that you mentioned. <laughs> oh no, this it's not. It's we haven't hit. We haven't hit the third strike yet. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I know you relish this. 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 Yeah. This stuff chaotic. So it's like I'm not. I'm not upset to 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 throw this shit at you all right so you get away like you still time mm-hmm. lapsing you know you're out of time let's switch over to atticus okay we've we have made the small oliver twist we have made sure that With oliver a twist lot had- of argument okay you know like this kid was like you said you were giving me food not a bath bath first lad then food oh this is cruelty Cruelty beyond measure for oh the humanity <laughs> yelling at you. <clears throat> and uh yeah, and he's just like, you know, protesting and all this kind of stuff. All he's got is his stinky clothes, too, just so you know, Sir Atticus. <laughs> oh, God help me. I'm making sure that the lad gets some like decent clothing, shoes, like making sure that this kid is set up at least. Nothing too new. I don't want him to get jumped supposed to pick pockets this way 
You're making me into a into a nonce. What? Boy, do you know anything of camouflage? Think of it not as looking like a nonce, but rather blending into a different environment. I'm sure that there are other parts of London where you could blend in more easily with this. And his face changes a little bit. Can't stay around Shoreditch all your life. You've been right kind to me, sir. Huh. And he will, this is the clue I owe you from the, from the 12. I found something mighty strange. And he will tell you when he was over at one point, he saw what looked like a dusty skeleton in one of their closets, dressed in finery. And you dressing him up kind of gave him that creepy impression as well that he remembered. You saw a skeleton right dressed as me. Even, even more so, sir. Like that fine thread and everything. Ah, uh, curiouser and curiouser, lad. What am I supposed to do? I'm like all cleaned up now and then I'm dressed like this. I can't go sleeping in a in a stoop. What am I supposed to do? Change your environment. Easy for you to say. You're probably going to go back to a grand big house and shit. And I'm like, I'm going to be back here. What am I going to do? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it, lad. Why don't you show me around Shoreditch? Places that you'd seen the figs about. And he will. He'll show you around. Uh, can I do like an investigation with uh, the child guiding me about and pointing out like, oh yeah, like that, that was the place where like Mrs. Fig gave me some food and that was where Mr. Fig told me about like how they make pies without the human parts and that sort of thing. So information move with reason, but um, is this with like advantage because of your want of privilege? Yes, because okay. because the the urchin is helping me. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right. Let's go. Wait a minute. Oh shit. Hold what? On. Hold on. I just want to check something. Okay. Budge. Okay, no, you don't you don't have anything at the moment. I'm not well. Do you, hmm. do, do you want I'm to? I'm going to affect, you're going to give it just, dis... hold on. Okay. You're going to be right. at straight roll because. Okay. You had advantage with the kid. However, you're, yeah, Axeman, Axeman Cometh is going to, is going to cancel that out. All yeah. right. Okay. You're inciting that. All right. Cool. I am inciting that for a reason. Reasons. Cool. So I, so I will, I, I will roll again. So that is a clean roll. Yeah. I'm at a flat zero. Plus. Yeah. My reason is zero. Okay. <laughs> That's right. It's like not negative one. Okay. Uh, that is a five plus a four, giving me nine. You're following him down, um, you know, a busy street. How do I do this to you? <laughs> You're following him down a busy street. And then suddenly he's no longer there. You find yourself down a street made of black obsidian. There's a theater there. And I don't know if you remember why. That means something. Does it feel familiar? Yes. What's the sky looking like? Gray, overcast. Not the same weather that we had. No. Well, I still have my weaponry on me. You are shifting back and forth. You look down and you see your usual gear and then you look down again and then you see what looks like priest robes. Priest robes, that's an odd thing to be wearing. Hmm. 
an uncomfortable thing to be wearing. No matter, I go to the theater. If anything, the lad's probably in there. And if not, well, like I said, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Take the condition, deja vu. All right, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna enjoy this 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 day phase before we head into dusk. So, Miss Kanan, Kanan, sorry, where would you like to go next? Ooh, I hadn't thought about that. Um, probably back home. I'm, she's tired. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, you should go back home. Uh, sort of continue to sort of uh, unpack, and by unpack, I mean make uh, other people unpack for her. Um, enjoying some of the hashish, trying to sort of settle herself. I think maybe too, she'll have some of the books brought up from the library to sort of go through, see uh, she recognizes anything, anything from either the books in the library or from her own archives. In terms of the anomaly? Uh, yes. Okay, gotcha. Is this where you are casually perusing or are you actively doing an information move? I mean, I'm actively doing an information move, but as casually as possible. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, so I don't believe I gave you any conditions yet. That deja vu. Deja vu, okay. Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yes, please roll information move with reason. Reason. Quite reasonable. All right, all right, all right. Let's see here. Oh, no, that's a minus one. Um, I mean, unless you can parlay something else. <laughs> yeah. Um, she's going to, she'll cross-reference her little black book to see if uh, if she does find anything that, that she will follow up with. Uh, like if she picks up on a clue, she's going to use that to follow up with someone in the book to elaborate on it or help her elaborate on it. Okay, so call that straight roll with yep. reason. The minus one, four total. Damn. You already owe me a mask. Uh, yeah. So is another mask are you this. running? No, I'm running with this. Okay. Okay. So replace deja vu with out of time. That's one. I'm going to say, as you're there, are you in your room or are you in the library somewhere? Oh, I'm in my room. Okay. I had books brought to me. Ah, books brought to you. Okay. And did you say that you were in the biggest room? I thought it was, yeah. You look up from your book and the scene shifts. Suddenly you see red rope draped on the wall, as well as kimonos and masks. And then the smell of flowers is incredibly overwhelming as you see before you a resplendent flower cape it spreads across the room almost encompassing an entire garden's worth of flowers as it's draped here on top of your stuff, on top of your books. You can't get to your books now because you are suddenly sheathed in this cape of flowers. And my familiar isn't around. I'm alone in the room. No, you don't see or hear anyone else about you. And there is, there's a door here that you didn't notice before, but it's here now. And there's a key of a sort, a strange shape in the lock. Do you go look? She throws the flower cape off her. It's Scotty and flowers do nothing for her. She's never been a fan of, uh, of uh, English uh, flowers and uh so i think yeah um 
She's going to go to the door with the key, just sort of looking it over or plugging it in, seeing if it works. Okay. Turn the key and it's almost like this distant, heavy clunk and gear turning inside. And when you finally get the key completely turned, the door creaks open of its own volition, leading into darkness. What do you do? Is there any kind of lighting? Very dimly, like further down the, what looks like a hallway, a tunnel at the end of this. She will take, uh, we'll say that in this room, there's maybe like a, like an old Bushido suit. Uh, and she'll take the helmet, sort of wedge it between the door and uh, the opening, just so it like stays open. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, she'll go inside. <laughs> and Dame Georgie, so you just narrowly got, you know, missed getting your head <laughs> yeah. sliced open or sliced off. And, uh, you know, La Hort- you hear La-, La Hortensia's laugh as you move out of the hell, hell way. And uh, she makes it out of there. She pushes back. She pushes past the scythe trap and, you know, runs downstairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think futil- like in the sort of act of futility, I'm going to try try to chase after her but I think like she's just quicker because she knows this house she knows these streets Mm -hmm. so like I think I make it like outside the building and she's completely lost to me yep and then you're looking around like you know the streets and like you know some people are looking at you curiously maybe you came out of like the back entrance or the side Mm -hmm. or something but uh, yeah I mean like some people look and then some people just shrug and move on but yeah, you lost her. And then Sir Atticus, you went into the theater. Yep. <laughs> it is silent, except for the possible sound of droplets. And you smell blood. Yeah, the weapons are coming out now. If if I can grab them, you said it was flickering in and out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to say night move on this one. Okay. And you are being affected by the deja vu. Mm. You still get advantage for, well. Am I in physical combat with a supernatural creature? I'm going to say yes. Cool. Uh, we will roll the dice with disadvantage and mm-hmm. we'll see where we go from there. Uh, that is a four. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do something I've not done yet. And this mm-hmm. is season two. I'm going to mark off a box on my weapon. Ooh. The main move for the legacy is a hunter's life. Mm-hmm. I have the burden. And uh, when I use the weapon in physical combat with the supernatural creature, I can mark a box and describe how the weapon has been modified to be particularly effective against creatures of this type. (laughs) I don't know what the type is, but I'm going to say that there is a small vial of blood that is in the hilt of the weapon, such that I'm always able to at least get a hold of it, regardless of illusion, of distance, of... Okay. As long as it's, like, actually there. Yeah. Oh, it's actually there, all right. Because, yeah, you took a... You're using Hunter's Life for... I'm using Hunter's Life to increase the result. A tier of a single die roll connected to that combat as if I had invoked a Janus mask. And then afterwards, I owe you a flashback. Yes, you do. Okay. So what ends up happening for this complication? And um, (laughs) yeah, 
Mm. Change yours to out of time as well. No longer deja vu. You are out of time. I'm like out of out of the out of the darkness and behind you, from where the dripping blood is, um, you hear a roar, and there is this creature with an enormous boar's head and tusks, but with the body of a man, very built man, and his monstrous fist is crashing towards your head. Fair. And we're actually going to, we're actually going to leave you there because we know that you're not going to be here for a few weeks. No! (laughs) No! (laughs) What better way to pass the time than being you dropped me into a straight up fight. Come yes, on. Yes, I did. I will find out what the what the result is like when we return, when you return. You will get back. It's like that 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 title card like at the end of the the, the movie. It's like Sir Atticus Wellington Hughes the 4th will return. <laughs> Question mark. Question mark. <laughs> no, there. He will. He will. He will. You will. Yeah. I mean, like I knew I was going to have to have a way to to kind of keep you out of out of the fray for a little bit. <laughs> By putting him into a different fray. Yes, absolutely. Come on, man. You're gonna be in a fight. What do you want? To finish the fight. <laughs> you will. No worries. I will have you finish the fight. That is not a problem, but you just won't do it now. <laughs> Cause <coughs> You know, we're coming your time and I don't want to like miss any, miss anything. So, um, you know, we could conceivably like, you know, like shift into dusk phase, take a look at where we're at right now. And then um, just, you know, get ready for, for the next session, which would be either the beginning of dusk phase or the beginning of night phase. So however that that's going to play out. All right. So I I think we could just do dusk phase now, right? Yeah. We got a little bit of time. Absolutely. But again, I know how we get, so I want to make sure that we're covered. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the threats again. All right, so we got fix pigs, which is four clues. And again, you have each of these things is a two complexity, okay? So conceivably, you could answer one of the questions, two of the questions, what have you. And then like, you know, at least this way, you kind of line yourself up for whatever comes next. All right. And then mean times at Greenwich, you have three clues. Atticus, it's like, you know, I would like you to come up with a clue before their next session, just because we'll get you out of, don't worry, we'll get you out oh, of Oh, I this, come up with the clue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's why I said Atticus TBD. So we know who oh, has to provide the clue. Oh, okay. Yeah. Getting, getting additional context would be cool, but all right. Uh, well, I mean, again, so so you've got the two questions, the two ways that you can answer the the mean times in Greenwich, right? I mean, so you can either pick the complexity four, so what did the voyage discover and what went wrong on the voyage, or six complexity, which is what did Doctor Fisher learn from the material discovered by the HMS Whippet, and what power does it hold? Okay, so two different can, ways you can resolve. Can Can I just write like Doctor Fisher's trial data, just from repeated experiments? Or is that too on the nose? I mean, can't conclusively answer a question. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Feels a little conclusive. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll think yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there is a, like a third question, but that's like a bonus question about which James Alderus belongs to this time period and how has he fallen victim to the anomaly? It's a complexity too. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's a different one. Yeah. Okay. I, I have something for that then. Okay. Ooh. Um, okay. it is a family portrait with, uh, James Allardis, uh, in the photo, but it just, depending on how you look, it, the, the face just keeps on changing between the different ones. So it's uncertain oh. to tell, uh, which one is the real one. Wow. Thanks. Constantly ever-changing portrait, I guess you can call yeah. it. It's like what do they call them? The lenticular, yeah, like the those those really cool um, 
Mm-hmm. Turn to the one side, turn to the other. Yeah, love those. Just like scratching them. <laughs> <laughs> Just so much fun. All right. So like that, so much fun. Okay. So I don't know if you wanted to try and answer at least one of the Figs Pigs questions and or the James Allardis question for Mean Times in Greenwich, like, you know, for, for this dusk phase. I would like more questions for Mean Time or more clues rather. Yeah. Uh, okay. We answer those questions sure. just because we haven't met the third James and I'd like to meet him before we determine mm-hmm. which sure. one it is. Okay. Fair. Um, what about Fig's Pigs? I know I'm I have a, out of order, but eh. I, I have a theory with one of them, um, oh. but I also, I don't know, I haven't been involved with it. So I'm also compliant with like letting the folks who've been involved with it kind of deal with it. Um, but if you want to hear my theory, I will pose it. Why not? I have a couple of theories to you. Um, so the theory that I have for what type of victim does Obert Fig prefer? Mm. He prefers, uh, and I'm using three clues for this. Uh, mm-hmm. The dusty skeleton dressed in finery, this mm-hmm. collection of skeletal hands, each one smaller than the next, and a message, uh, not a message, a book of nursery rhymes with the references to birds crossed out. I think he likes birds. And by birds, I mean... Uh, young women of the night. Oh wow! Oh, nice. Oh my gosh! The, the finery is uh, um, it's it's like either threadbare or old. You know, it's it's something mm-hmm. that was maybe given secondhand. Sure. Uh, the skeletons, or the skeletal features, are things that are you know he's he's a killer, so he likes to collect tokens, and so he's collected uh, the hands and one skeleton of maybe his favorite victim. Um, but the the crossing out of the birds in the book of nursery rhymes is sort of his sick joke of like, I got another one. Yeah. Mm. Mm. He's probably running running around with another book of nursery rhymes or something similar, and then mm-hmm. starting to cross out those bird pictures. Oh my god, that's like amazing, yeah. horrifying, but amazing. Damn. I mean, that sounds great to me. I don't I don't know about anybody else. So. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I. Originally, I was going to use uh, the Book of Nerf History of Rhymes to maybe explain Patrick Fig, because that's like, well, more animal. Well, I like really. I, we can we can wait if you want. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. But, I, but I really like I really like the sort of the, the, the twisted pun, as it were. Like, yeah. uh, I'm really into that. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. That's very clever. I maybe wouldn't. maybe if you want to get um the last one the message written in blood it guy is copying the associated nursery rhyme and like leaving them as calling cards Ooh, yeah Ooh. it's like it's like yeah just like pieces of nursery rhyme written in there yeah like his calling card Damn. And, and the audacity to write it on like branded paper and thinking like you can't you can't stop me yeah oh man oh my god i love this i love that oh uh, and we have an Oh, oh, Sir Atticus. Oh, you're gonna. Oh, I'm so sad that you're gonna miss out on, on Obert. I'm very, I'm very sad because I, I, man, I want to throw down. <laughs> How long are you gonna be gone? Uh, like three weeks. Oh, okay. I was gonna say we could try and hold out. <laughs> no, I don't think you're gonna want to hold out because people are gonna die. <laughs> yeah. Bing. Figs, re- figs. F. Yeah. Excuse me. The uh the figs being uh, being allowed to run around, mm, yeah, mm-hmm. they're gonna be deaths. <laughs> so, uh, uh, why don't we give this uh to Sir Atticus to roll? Well, no, it, it yeah. was Jack's theory. No, roll it. You're not gonna be here, so roll yeah. it. Plus two. Plus two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Plus two. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Uh, that is a seven. Okay. Plus two, nine. Nice. You are correct. And so therefore lure Obert Fig to you and capture or destroy him. So I guess for that particular plan, you were going to let's let's go ahead and put that solution in there. Like we're gonna do lure him how? We got a bird. Is that what we're doing? Is that what no? I th- I'm. I mean, I'm fine waiting till next for, to the night phase to okay. figure that out. Yeah. But, um, I, I, don't, I don't. I don't know how. You you should probably still like write the theory so that like you can mm-hmm. remember. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. As, as so well just as, do it right underneath the the, the resolution. Yeah. As well as a note on the roll because we did roll a nine and that yeah. introduces a unto, unwanted complication to the threat. 
All right, I updated the notes. Perfect. And I think I am owed a mask by our new hunter. Um, if it's okay, I'd like to do that next time. Sure. Mm -hmm. So owed mask. Let's <laughs> let's go back to going in order. Huh? Any dusk playbook moves I need to worry about at the moment? Uh, yes, cosmic passage. Okay, go for it. This might give me my third condition. Um, well, before I roll this, do any of my current conditions impact my connection with the beast? Mm. Mm. Oh, it's so tempting. Goddamn. Um, <laughs> I got, I got to listen. Fair is fair. I got to lay it out there. Uh, out of time. Out of time is going to fuck you up, man. I'm sorry. It is what it is. Let's go. Uh, that is a four. Oh my oh, god. god damn. Oh my god. What's the miss? Uh, oh wait, hold on. Plus cuz this is with presence. Mm -hmm. Plus 1. That's a 5. Not much better. Not uh, much better. Oh my god. I don't know what happens on a miss. Uh, uh if if a miss is not listed out, it's a keeper reaction. Oh boy. Let me look at that again. Hold on. Beast has grown. Start a dusk phase. Presence. You're bloodthirsty. Mm -hmm. It's a big pig man. If if I use a mask, uh -huh. would would that would just be good enough to like bloodthirsty is all I get because that's what the correct mask says. correct because I have this very 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 bad idea. Yeah. Um, I will, I, I get, come on, tell me, tell me what the bad idea is before I decide whether I'm marking this mask or not. Seratikus, you like blood. On and occasion, I, yeah. And I think, I think you're going to be meeting the mastermind a lot sooner than you expected. <gasps> While you're engaged with this particular beast here in the void. Okay. So... Either I mark a mask or I face off against the mastermind and a general threat with three conditions. Yeah, I, I guess I'm marking a mask. <laughs> Wait, okay. Me, the player, me, like, you know, <laughs> me, the soft hearted, you know, whatever. I'm sorry. Me, the keeper is just like, <laughs> I will I will mark a mask of the past. Jesus Christ. Are we getting to the same situation again? Yep. I mean, there's right. there is a thing that is just take a condition, amp up the condi condition. Jesus H Christ. Okay. Yeah, this Greenwich Greenwich thing is not good. No. I don't like it. It's very, very uncomfortable. I'm so sorry. But it's fun, yeah. unfortunately. I don't so. like it. <laughs> I really like it. I mean, it's just really cool. <sighs> okay, sorry. Next. Oi. Anybody else that's got oh. Well, uh, in terms of other uh, desk uh, moves, I'm going to spend an REC slot uh, okay. to, uh, to, uh, uh, to call upon my good old friend, Rear Admiral Alfred Bingley Green. Mm -hmm. Jowly, quiet eyes that have seen things. Okay. The Rear Admiral is a former member of Hargrave House and has an unmatched collection of specialized weapons he collected from his time there. He is happy to give you access to them from time to time. During the dusk phase, each hunter adds a specialized weapon to their personal quarters. Pick from the list below or write your own. The weapon must be removed from your personal quarters once it is marked. Uh, silver bullets, cold iron sword, wooden stake launcher, holy water bo uh, bombs, sword cane, just a fuck ton of dynamite, razor rosary, caltrops, ba uh, balisong, trick umbrella, vicious dogs, elephant gun, runic gauntlets, exploding pocket watch, poison spectacles, acid pen, metal claws, Salt Peter Gun Hex Bag Flash Powder. I would like the Hex Bag, please. 
You gave me a present? I gave you a present because you, you gave needed. me a present. <laughs> you need it, Sir Atticus, or you're gonna die. Uh, despite your best efforts, I might still die. Um ooh, as as tempting as it is to just have a bunch of dynamite like the Bolshevik Muppet, um, I will take uh, the Razor Rosary, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking the sword thing because I need an actual weapon, an actual stabby weapon, besides like an, a secret pocket knife. So let me just clarify, uh, Atticus, are you taking a mask? Yes. Okay. It's the mask that you had told me about. Yes. Oh, actually... Holy water bomb sounds like a good idea. I'll take that one instead because I have enough slashy weapons. The burden would be jealous if you took on another slashy weapon, I'm sure. Yes. Paint the scene. Oh, because of the timey wimey, let's go with the trophy room. There were hunters living in Hargrave House before you. Trophies from their encounters with the supernatural can be found here. Describe one. And because Mean Times is in play, could also be a trophy from the future. There is a mummified head. It's clearly been decapitated. It's of a person. It's aged and it's hard to tell. But if you're in the same room with him, it looks a lot like Dame Georgie. <laughs> I'm making a note of that, that it's specifically my head. I was going to say it was your head. Could be a doppelganger, or could be a clone. Just looks like you. Somebody has whatever. Anyway, a secret You're... twin that you don't know about. Cosmic twin. <laughs> Cosmic twinsies. All right, there you go. Keep going. God, I can't. I can't talk about it. Sorry. There is a wooden mask, a featureless. It has two eye holes, but the texture of it seems to contour to a face and the bark mimics sort of the textures of flesh. I think that there is an easy chair carved of petrified wood. The wood is dark. And if you if you squint your eyes just right, it looks like there's the screaming faces in pain. And somebody has just upholstered it with some very nice silk. It's a very comfortable chair, just a little disturbing. I mean, you kind of know what Atticus is going to be doing out of time <laughs> for the upcoming night phase and whoever knows how long. And then anybody else wants to kind of pose what they think they might be doing for night phase? I'd like to throw a party at Hargrave House. Ooh. Since you've mentioned that, I will... I will, I, I was going to be like throwing, I was going to be probably hunting down over Fig, uh, but however, I, I'm going to change my mind on that, and I'm going to actually throw a party at Hargrave House. As the same part party of, or competing party? Competing <laughs> party, of course. Oh, okay. Um, but however, I have a mechanic for that, so. Mm. I'm undeniable, so it's fine. Yeah, so. And I'm missing a rager too. Come on, two ragers. Ah! Literally I... fighting for my life. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the party for Atticus, though, right? It is. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't physically get you here if you're not here. Sorry. Oi. Okay. So you you two are going to be doing competing parties. I guess so. That. I is hilarious yeah oh uh i will uh yeah because i'm spending an rec slot on this i i will be recruiting the help of sir stewart trembling wells uh fine brocade smoking jacket cigarette holder ring precisely groomed sir stewart is a former explorer but now spends most of his time chasing young men and throwing lavish parties with his help you throw an extravagant party at hargrave house name any side characters you wish they will be in attendance the mastermind will also show up at some point <laughs> um i i will think about who i'm gonna invite to my party 
Ooh, tea or party. Yeah, because I need a list of side characters, as well as provide a list of other side characters, because there's some people I want to invite, purely to just to spite them. Well, I've invited Queen Victoria, so we'll see how that happens. Oh my lord. This is going to be... Will she arrive? The bomb. We'll see what happens. If not Victoria, then I will say there will be a representative of the royal family that attends the party. 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 Okay, so I guess we're having competing parties. Awesome. <laughs> and then you want to and then you want to reserve the, the your your mask until next time. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then Atticus is like gonna do his mask when he comes back. Um man, I have so many damn notes. Oh my god. I mean I could I usually that. watch I usually rewatch this stuff just to get my memory like you know on track, but then I'm like, I think I'm gonna be like what like eating a lot of popcorn while I'm like watching this one. <laughs> god damn um i can i can do the mask now just like oh okay to close that oh yeah if you want yeah sure close loop yeah um so i am in this theater facing down this beast i narrate a flashback to when i watched the beast destroy the family member who understood me the most i think back the beast was as large as this thing. I remember that it was a quiet winter and they had opened the door and the beast just struck at them, pulled them into the dark, used their cries to lure us out. Myself, father. And we cut to me running through the snow, the burden in hand. And I find the clearing. And I know that it's a trap, but it's them. I have to save them. And when I look, I it, it keeps changing. One moment it's a sister, and another I never really had a sister, but this was my cousin who knew me very well. And another an uncle, I No, it was definitely a sister that the beast took from me. And there was nothing I could do. By the time I got there, it was too late. Thank you. Hmm. Competing parties. So I think we're going to go with a tale of a humble baker's son with a night at the Grand Gunyal for Night faces unseen. Every class of people in London is represented by the audience at the Theatre Grand Gunyal. They have come to watch the newest production, The Baker's Son, a story filled with romance, heartbreak, and bucketfuls of blood. Paint the scene, of course, will be everyone. And then prompt one will be Sarah. Two will be Jack. I mean, three, excuse me. I can count. It's great. And prompt four will be chaotic. Okay, so we're all set for that. And I think that's everything for Dawn Phase. God help us. Dust Phase. Dust Phase. Okay, see? I mean, I'm already a mess. All right, it's great. No. Big Night Phase. Big, big Night Phase. All right, great. Stars and Wishes. Wrap up the, wrap up the session what you liked about the game, the gameplay, each other, role play, all that fun stuff and wishes for next time. In your case, Mike, I mean. <laughs> I would like to live very badly. I know, I'm sorry. God. Uh, my wish would just be that you were here with us. Thank you. Just leaving us for three weeks. Yes. Yeah. Um. But no, I, I, I do wish that you were here, but I understand real life stuff. Yeah, no, uh, good times all around. I really, I've been wanting to play the Mean Times uh, threat. Uh, and I meant to play it at the end of my own campaign, but I forgot to run it and timing it to work out. Um, huh, timing. Um, 
but yeah, no, I'm excited already by by it and the you know these mounting conditions. Um, uh, star for everybody uh, for putting up with uh, me and uh, Liat uh, uh, struggling for vocabulary tonight. I don't know why I'm a little brain dead, but um, uh, but yeah, no, uh, I hope that uh, I hope to see more of what she's about to do um, and. Uh, excited for fixed pigs. Um, I love that Georgie was just kind of going for it in in the pie shop and uh, just seeing this like you know this uh, very precious uh, man just sort of dealing with like full on murder altar and then being assaulted by uh, you know the Hortensia. Uh, this is just this is an interesting visual that like that you would expect someone like like Atticus to be in, but I like that it was Georgie. Um, and uh, speaking of Atticus, uh, wish is that he survives, uh, but uh, yeah, star four. I love the little like connection that you made with this little like uh, rapscallion, you know, this uh, little street urchin. Uh, and I guess another wish is if you survive uh, to see if that plays out at all, if, you know, you sort of do like a whole Batman Robin thing, who knows, um, you know, Whatever happens, happens. Uh, and yeah, just excited to see what uh, two parties in Hargrave House are going to be like. I gotta give a star to Sir Acticus for his vulnerable scenes today because like it was just very interesting to like see him interact, introducing effectively the our newest hunter to Hargrave House, as well as like having a somewhat moment to moment between him and James Georgie of like, oh, we are kind of alike in a weird way. We d both have like issues with our families. I'm re I'm really looking forward to like the, the party scenes. <laughs> um, I have an idea about who I would invite because Dame Georgie is under the per presumption that Sir Atticus is going to be at the party. So he's going to try to, at least my initial like, thoughts are to try to invite Dame Georgie's some of his family to the party. That's that's fine. I feel like we're gonna have very different parties. <laughs> we're having very <laughs> different parties. Oh, I'm sorry, is it my turn? <laughs> is, I, I don't know. Do you want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, let's see. We'll go around. Uh, Mads, star for that really eerie cry that you had that side character just do in the middle of I don't know, a, 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 a time schism, man, man was wigging out and you did a very good job with that spooky cry. I had to do a double take like, oh, okay. Um, chaotic, I really did enjoy the vulnerable scene. Like it was, it was a reversal from how we previously played the Atticus Georgie relationship. I thought it was nice. Like, like, like we were mentioning, just a little bit of levity before everything starts falling apart. <laughs> um, the same thing, Jack, wonderful to meet the new character. Um, I hope things remain polite, even though can already tell having an ego is just how the undeniable plays. Um, I'm interested to see where that goes. Uh, and for wishes, um, I would very much like to live very badly without burning through all of my masks. Uh, I have I have some some items in my personal quarters, including uh, the holy water bombs I was given as a gift from my dear friend Georgie before I left home today. Um, I did I my I did my best to try to save you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I will be using these. Uh, also, I, I I do want to see what happens with young Oliver Twist or whoever this urchin is, uh, whether whether it is a Robin scenario or just he robs you. <laughs> even 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 if it's just like this kid that shows up in the nicer part of town now because I gave him some camouflage, like sure, why sure. not? Yeah. 
and and just so you know his name he will give you his name as rag with a double g rag of course it is of All course right. it is <laughs> Of course it is. We're gonna have to work up to getting you a last name, kid. I mean, you could just adopt the kid. No. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that is a burden. I'm not sure I want to give this kid, but maybe I will have to. All right, all right. That's all right. That wish, wish, figure out what's going on with that question because that's a good question. Uh, Sir Atticus just becomes Batman. <laughs> Despite my resistance, <laughs> darn it. Oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> and then it. I gotta take a break. All I right, know. Mads, back to you. Oh my god, so funny. <laughs> Everybody did such a wonderful job today. Oh my god, and I love the introduction of uh, uh, Liat Kanan. I mean, beautiful and already stepping up to to the plate um yeah no i mean it's it's going to be interesting to see and i know i left you where i left you but you do make it back out of out of the hallway to start your party so no worries and then uh dame georgie you know way to roll again i mean like i love that explanation that it's like nope she was expecting somebody taller <laughs> to be able to to be able to slice their head off and it's like dame georgie got through it it's like great so uh you know way to keep your composure and uh sir atticus i am so sorry i'm making you my punching bag for the for the time threat but i mean given your unique situation it's kind of i thought it was quite fitting to do it because especially to explain your absence for three weeks and uh yeah i mean you're all doing wonderfully i mean i was Rewatching last episode just to make sure that I like I had stuff covered, and then even now, I'm going to be rewatching this one, going, "What the hell?" <laughs> so much stuff going on, and I love it. So I hope you know you will continue to have fun because I am. I mean, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. Um, and yeah, I just really love the way this game just allows so much to happen. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to next week. We will miss Sir Atticus. So my wish would have been to <laughs> have him join us, but it is what it is. IRL takes precedence. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what you guys do with your your rivaling parties. Holy shit. I want to get in details before before next Friday, please. Oh, Both of you. Yeah, I have a, I have a list. Okay. Of like, a, of like NPCs that are alive that are dead um don't worry about it some people just die and there's angst about it you just tell me who i'll I shoot you the guest list don't worry Perfect. yeah you just tell me who i have to play or not play or you know play dead i don't care mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know i'll just yeah. run with it like uh -huh. i normally do all right so um and i know i know i've marked off some some mastermind clues that i owe because of like people's really good roles um or what have you so i know i owe those and like always i'm catching up so uh yeah expect to see a lot of that for next time have a great week you know mm -hmm. unless i see it for something earlier for something else um happy gaming to you all all right mm -hmm. and mike we'll see you in three oh keep in keep touching keep in touch in chat though i mean like you know if there's anything oh yeah changes. oh if you're posting the videos i'm gonna watch them <laughs> will you you promised me two parties? Yeah, I need I know. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All righty. Fabulous. Bye. All right. See ya. See Bye. ya. Bye.